Um, our first speaker is Mikkel from the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Please give me a warm welcome. Hi. I'm uh, going to try something different that I've never done before. No slides. Just me. Yeah, so you just have to look at me. You've had to, you've had to do this before, right? Um, I have some notes, so I might look at my computer. Um, I'm uh, listing myself as a board member of the OpenStreetMap Foundation for this talk. I wear many hats in the OpenStreetMap community, but wanted to put up front, these are my thoughts, or thoughts are maybe too defined. started last December. Um, it's been really fantastic. I've really been pleased uh, with uh, the environment that the board has been working, with, working in. And um, yeah, just very, it's been very good. And it's given me some space to, to think about some things about OpenStreetMap. And how many of you have had someone ask you, what is OpenStreetMap? How does it work? And you've had to yeah. How many times? <laughs> and how many of you are satisfied with the answer that you give? Okay, that's good. I'm not, <laughs> personally. Um, maybe it, it has to do with being so close to the project for, for a while. But it's really hard to describe what OpenStreetMap is about because it is, I don't think there's anything else like it in, um, in history. Um, even you know, comparing to Wikipedia, we we have a lot of we do things in a lot of different ways, and trying to explain how this thing works um, doesn't come down to a to a simple motto. Um, so it takes a long time, um, and not everyone wants to have hear the whole story. But uh, I think coming to State of the Map, you get to see all of the aspects of what OpenStreetMap is, and it's an incredible variety. Um, I wanted to talk about, about myths, um, and not in, not in the, the notion of a magical story which never happened, but, but a magical story which actually gets people to do things together. Um, I read a really interesting book, uh, which I recommend, called Sapiens, um, and it was ambitious, trying to encompass the whole of human history in one book, looking at anthropology and um, economics and, uh, and history. And, you know, at a, there was a time when human beings trying to cooperate together didn't really operate in groups larger than, say, 150 people. Um, and there came a time when you can see with, like, the ancient Egyptian um, civilization where human beings operated on a whole other level. And how, did they po how do you possibly get that many people to all work together, some of whom are sacrificing tremendous amounts for, of their own lives in order to reach some, some greater goal, which may have minimal impact on, on themselves. Um, of course, that's become more equitable over time, fortunately. But what it's been is like there's, there's myths which motivate people to spend their time doing things they may not otherwise do for some greater good, whether it's to appease some spirit or whether it's to help the pharaoh reach the afterlife in the proper way. Um, there are these stories that we've always told about ourselves. And so OpenStreetMap, as a project, as a community, um, also has its animating myths. I think they're a lot more realistic than the myths of ancient times, but there's still these, there are stories that we tell about our project, about what we're trying to do, which convinces, convinced all of you, every one of you, to get involved. Um, even, even if it seems very, very practical. And the, you know, this basic way we talk about what we do in OpenStreetMap is it's a free and open map of the entire world. Everyone can, anyone can contribute. People show up and contribute map data and make a map. Um, and that's absolutely true. And that's sort of the core of what OpenStreetMap's about. But what I've been trying to struggle with is there's so much more to what, open, what OpenStreetMap is. Um, there's many motivations, there's many kinds of ways that people get involved, and I don't, I think the kinds of things that we struggle with like, um, again and again in talking about 
where the project is and where the project going is going it comes down to a little bit of a lack of clarity around what it is we actually do and what it is that we, that we value. And we've had, like, just over the last week, on the board mailing list, we had a bit of discussion about our, our values. And there's been efforts within the OpenStreetMap community to describe, well, these are the core values of OpenStreetMap. And I mean, anytime I hear something like that, I just think, like, this is, I know it's not BS, but, if, <laughs> but it's hard to think, to have that kind of discussion about values and vision without being worried about just, just being separated from something that's real and tangible. Um, but this is, um, this is something that we're, that, that we're missing. I think, or something that, not that we're missing, but something that there's many different ideas about and it would be nice to come to a, a common place. Now, there's some many awesome t-shirts <laughs> that, have, that have appeared today, including the Craft Mappers t-shirts. And if, how many people don't know what that's referring to? Okay, so uh, after State of the Map US, um, Mike McGursky, who's been involved with OpenStreetMap and mapping stuff for a long time, posted, I made a post about um, like robots, humanitarians, and craft mappers. And I think very understandably, it got a lot of people angry and off, off the, on the wrong foot um, about what I think actually was a very important discussion. I think there was a lot of very interesting topics. He was, after State of the Map US, um, there were some very interesting developments presented in machine learning and how that could potentially impact the process of creating data in OpenStreetMap, the robots, so to speak. And um, Mike, I think, expressed some frust frustration with the traditional way that OpenStreetMap operates, or the way we think about it, the, the craft mappers. And I, I hate this dichotomy. I think that was, <laughs> that was a really terrible, personally, I think it was, uh, with all uh, respect to Mike, I think it was bound to, it got people's attention for sure, right? Like, it even got t-shirts made, <laughs> so that's, um, so I think that's, it's good to have that conversation and I don't want to, I don't want to lose the, the interesting puzzles there, the interesting issues that Mike was raising in particular there, and that's, I don't need to go into it in detail, but like, what is machine learning, what kind of impact does it have on what OpenStreetMap is and what it's about? I think that's a really valid, uh, really valid question. I have ideas about that. Um, so I think if we think about our values, I think pretty much anybody, wherever, however they're coming to to OpenStreetMap, there's this, there is, uh, we are centered on the on mapping and on the human contribution to a map. And that's what makes this distinct. I mean, OpenStreetMap is a database, right, ultimately, with an API, but it's the ability for people to really be a part of that database, whether they're just sitting at home and never talking to anybody and editing the map, or whether they're coming here to stay to the map and meeting everybody and having lots of discussions. Um, there is something social about it, and that's unique in databases. Many da if there's a lot of work in the open data space, um, governments opening up their data, and it often feels sterile and, f and, and fragile because there's no human face behind it. It's just, oh great, there's a data set. And we go through this kind of discussion anytime there's an import, oh, there's a data set, but so what? Who cares, who's actually caring about that data set? And it's obvious in OpenStreetMap that there's passion involved. And one thing that I, I think that's a definite core value, and one thing I'd want to posit is that when something like, you know, quote unquote, robot mappers or um, humanitarian mapping or people who come to OpenStreetMap with different ideas about how to do mapping and how to, the purpose of what they're doing, um, we never need to give up that it's human beings that are at the center, us, who are passionate about that database that makes it, makes it work and makes it the thing that, that OpenStreetMap is. Um, that's why I, I think the dichotomy or the trichotomy uh, that, that McGursky set up in that post gets things on the right, wrong foot because I don't necessarily, me personally, I don't think that the potential for machine learning, whether it provides something valuable or not, needs to fundamentally challenge what OpenStreetMap is about. Um, 
there's lots of challenges OpenStreetMap has faced, whether it's new techniques, whether it's companies getting involved, whether it's the World Bank getting involved or an embassy getting involved. Um, we're really strong, and there's a lot we've, OpenStreetMap has been able to move through all of that, and I see us burning a lot of energy in cycles, having the same kind of discussions over and over again, going in circles, not because those aren't important topics, but because we haven't been able to find a place to resolve them, and I think that's where this question about values and our myth really comes to. Um, one thing that I think we miss, miss a lot are, is an on-ramp and an invitation to everything that OpenStreetMap is. Now, there's gonna, 10 minutes for me. Okay. There's lots of people who will just, maybe they're just, they come to a mapathon for humanitarian mapping. Maybe they make an edit on maps.me. And, or even maybe they come to open, find the OpenStreetMap website and hit the edit button and register and then contribute. What I think we all need to do um, is there's so, it's the degree to which we can, you can get involved in OpenStreetMap is so deep. Not just in mapping and creation of the data, the, the software and the processes, all the things that we're talking about and doing here. Like, that's why I'm still interested in OpenStreetMap, just because it's, there's, it is such a deep um, space to work within. And I think we always need to be making that offer and thinking about how we make that offer in a way that can attract people. I think within the foundation, one thing we've struggled with um, is some of the working groups have not had like enough energy and activity. You know, like um, the communications working group is basically Harry Wood. Um, <laughs> yeah, Harry's nodding. Um, and but then there is lots of people who are very excited about communication, and um, I think we try to make that that opening possible, but it's also we still have, we're, there are, I think the next talk, that weekly OSM is next, is that right? So what's happening with weekly OSM that it's like, what kind of offering is being made there which, where people are, see that this is a place where they can make contributions? Um, I, think, I think we all have like, no matter where we're coming from in the project, have an obligation to the people who are creating data in OpenStreetMap to show like the whole, the whole spectrum. And that's hard because sometimes they only are with OpenStreetMap for an hour and you have to like, capture them, capture their imagination with a really good myth. I think we've had, um, there are some misplaced myths. Um, I don't know, like in the early days, uh, uh, I think a real home for OpenStreetMap was in kind of a really misfit arts community, <laughs> which is not so much part, some, I still uh, around OpenStreetMap, but like I first heard about OpenStreetMap going to Dorkbot in London and um, there's like, Real, you know, people doing really strange things with electricity, and OpenStreetMap is a really strange thing with electricity, um, and that was a real part of uh, of like the start of OpenStreetMap. Um, I think we also, as far as like, uh, we have a lot of misplaced myths about the role of money in companies in OpenStreetMap. Um, I think um, it's right to be to have to have questions and to have. To be to be um, skeptical, but I think we also um, what we don't practice enough is also recognizing when there have been positive contributions. Um, so, uh, for instance, um, earlier the five minutes um, there was a discussion about Mapbox GLJS. I work at Mapbox now. I was paying close attention and whether there could be a plugin for Leaflet to do vector tile visualization which sounds, sure, that sounds like a great thing, why not? Um, not that Ma Mapbox GeoJS is open source. Never mind, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the foundation board right now. Okay. Um, but Leaflet, if, that we all know and love, as you know, was, was actually built by someone who was working for CloudMade at the time, right? And API 0 0.6 to some degree, and I think there was like definitely, you know, questions in, in the minds of, like, of, of Andy and Matt who are working on it. API 0 0.6 was built under the auspices of, of CloudMate as well. And I think that's super valuable for, for the community. And so, I guess, how do we, no matter where, where you're coming from, how do we like, keep each other honest, but also 
recognize what, what each other are doing. And I'm talking about companies because this is, I work for a company now. But um, I think it's across the board, whether you're, why were we, why we're so upset about like the craft mappers thing was because it not recognizing not only the historic contribution of, of people who are walking around with GPS units to create an OpenStreetMap, but the reality that that's still like a huge part of what OpenStreetMap is today. Um, and so there's, there's an element of, of respect, which I now am really very much feel on the board um, with, with everyone, and we all have very different points of view. Though, by the way, like six of the seven of us on the board ha are currently or have previously worked for companies or organizations that where OpenStreetMap was part of their job. Um, so I think that, that says something. Um, but that kind of respect and that kind of space is something I would love to see grow bigger. How much time do I have left? One minute? Two minutes. Well, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. I have more notes, but I just decided to sit down and talk for a little while. Um, and if there's any like questions or comments, like maybe we can open it up. And I, I'll leave it there. Do you want to get a, do you want to get a mic around? Thanks for a great talk. Um, so I always love it when people examine issues like this in the, in the community, in the project, and um, uh, I think you're, you've done a, your share of that in the past, and it's always good to hear it. Uh, I just wanted to comment on, in the very early part, when you asked for the show of hands as to wh whether people would have been able to give a description and whether they would have been happy with the description. Now, I put my hand up, and I, I understand your misgivings, um, the reason I put my hand up, and I think it's something we should call out, is that there are many valid answers. There are certainly different mappers will definitely give different answers. I think, I, I know I've given different answers, and it depends on the emphasis, it depends who you're talking to, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing that's multifaceted for everybody. And I don't think this contradicts anything you said, but again, I wanted to call it out. I think that's okay but I think that's part of the, the, the challenge that we have, right? Because different people want different things out of the project, and that's okay. Our challenge is trying to arbitrate between these sometimes differing goals. Simply that. Yeah, yeah, good point. Of course, there's many answers to this, and I guess where I feel there's maybe a need to come up with, to broaden like the collective answer for how does OpenStreetMap work is that I do, I would like to spend more of my time like just making data and building stuff and doing interesting things. And I feel there's maybe, we spend, there's, there's too much opportunity to burn energy on kind of rehashing discussions, which like I said, are not about, they're not, it's not that they're invalid discussions or important, but that I think I'd love to get it to productively move someplace so that mm -hmm. we can do the things that we, no one really wants to argue with each other, right? Like we want to, we want to do cool stuff with maps. Mm -hmm. um, it's incredible. We're seeing so much of it this weekend, um, and so that's why I think you're right. Like, mm -hmm. but as embrace, many answers embrace, as possible. Embrace the uncertainty is what I'm saying. So at some yeah. point, we, we all need to back off and say, you know what? I'm not interested in three three dimensions. I'm not interested in buildings or addressing. Other people are, and at some point, you need to find ways of making it possible, you know, as, as long as the things are not directly in conflict, to, to find ways of making it work. Yeah, absolutely. More questions? Yeah, come on. This is your chance. Thank you. I'll, I'll come halfway down. So, Mikkel, thanks a lot for your talk. Um, I was hoping, I think we ran out of time, but I was hoping you were going to give us all the answers today. But maybe, um, do, you, do you have a sort of policy prescription around how you would, you know, there's many different visions of what OSM is, as you talked about. 
So how do we kind of create that map? Are you advocating for coming together and, and trying to formulate a common position or common vision? And if so, how do we, do you have ideas around how we might do that? Or um, are th moving forward from this discussion, are there concrete things that you'd like to do to kind of carry this forward? Thanks. Yeah, I think, I think we're, a good, good question. I, I think we're, that would be at this moment, like quite a, lot of lift. It would be quite a quite a, a, a big thing to take on. So as far as uh, governance and policy goes, what I've, um, I think is maybe one of the first steps and what the kind of thing I've been interested in in addressing these sorts of questions is um, the role of local communities, um, whether they're proto-local chapters or local chapters, the role of the reason why OpenStreetMap works, like, if you look at the core of, like, within the foundation and who's able to, like, who's really able to, like, hold this thing together, I think, it's, there's probably on the order of 150, 200, 300 people. It's a, it's a small group, probably very close to that number of human beings which were able to cooperate pre, you know, pre, like, large civilization. Um, maybe it's 500, I don't know. Um, and the governance that we have within the foundation, I think, very, is very much oriented around a size of, of constituency around that, around that size. And, um, but nevertheless, the reason why we're able to operate at a global scale among tens of thousands every month and hundreds of thousands over time is because of geography and because we're able to, like, not, we don't have to cooperate with everyone in the world, but you do need to cooperate with like, you know, your neighbors. And that's maybe still around that, like 150 people mark in your local community. So that's how we've been able to scale so far within producing data in OpenStreetMap. And I think as far as like governance and vision and values I th and doing more as a community, I, I have a lot of uh, interest in seeing what we can do with bringing the role, lo, role of local chapters, local communities, um, more within the governance of, of OpenStreetMap in some way. And I really, I don't, there's lots, I have no, if that's an interesting question to you, um, on Sunday at two, at Sunday at 10, we have a state of local, I think, which will be in here, and then at two, local chapters congress, where we're just gonna, which sounds fancy, but we're just going to get together and, and talk about local community stuff. Okay, we have time for one small question. Thanks, Mikael, for, for your comments. I really appreciate them. Um, I guess my question is, what is the plan to kind of grow foundation membership? I think that, that I think it's very quiet about foundation membership, but I think if you're talking about governance and community growth, I think that's super important. And I'm just wondering, is there a plan, and maybe could people be activated to talk about that as part of the local session? Thank you. I, d I don't have a plan, but for at least everyone who's in this audience, um, come downstairs to the OpenStreetMap Foundation booth and become a member if you're not already, and talk to the people who are on the board and other people who are more involved to see what opportunities you can have. That's a start. We did not, that was not rehearsed. Okay, thanks very much, everybody.